Welcome, Age of Vintage Society. Talent or luck, no one can take away the fact that Eva Marie Saint was a huge success in her acting career. The nature of her unique and evergreen success would continue to be cherished by many for a time too long. With an extended acting career, enduring marriage and several recognitions, one would naturally see her as an epitome of extension, as almost everything about her appear extended. Significantly, she became the oldest living performer to gain an Academy Award and among the last surviving stars of the golden age of Hollywood cinema. Why Eva Marie Saint felt uncomfortable from Marlon Brando? Make sure to watch the video until the end and leave your thoughts in the comments. If you are new here, join our wonderful community by subscribing to the Age of Vintage channel. Eva Marie Saint is an American film actress, stage performer and television personality. She is remarkably successful with about 75 years of an active acting career, earning double Hollywood Walk of Fame stars, Oscar and Emmy, and enjoying 65 years of fruitful marital union. Saint is sure an inspiration for generations to come. This Hollywood living legend has shown that almost everything is possible, perhaps with hard work and a little focus. Her desire and practical love for stage performances could not have been better appreciated with her surprising Oscar win in her initial movie appearance. Famous movie director Elia Kazan got things incredibly right when he invented the Brando and Saint combination in that historic On the Waterfront that stood in history as among the greatest movies of all time, winning multiple Academy Awards, including Best Picture, Best Director and Best Actor and Best Supporting Actor Awards. At the time, Saint was just 30 and swimming in energy and talent as she complimented Brando in a way that made her a sensation for fans and critics and thereafter became a choice Hollywood actress for the subsequent 15 years of her movie career. She became a celebrated actress in several Hollywood hit films, Broadway productions and TV shows. Regardless of her growing popularity then, Saint humbly took a conscious decision to stay off the movie scene at some point, so she could give full attention to her family life. It's an area she also stood out at as a role model, living with her husband for such an extended period before his death. Did she really want to do the film that made her popular against her usual stage performances? It doesn't seem so, as she later admitted in an interview, but that decision would have been a regrettable one if she had not taken the bold step to put her name in part of history. Analysts will also remember her husband, who played a significant role in her successes, believing in her and helping Saint fulfil such a wonderful career dream all through the years. As she also hinted, it seems the pair were perfectly made for each other. Saint may not be the leading lady that you will find in most of her renowned film appearances, but she has a place as a best supporting actress, making notable appearances opposite major film stars of her era, the likes of Paul Newman in Exodus, the Montgomery Clift in Rain Tree County, and Warren Beatty in All Fall Down, plus Marlon Brando in On the Waterfront readily comes to mind. Eva Marie Saint was born on 4th of July 1924, somewhere in Newark, New Jersey. She was part of the 1942 graduating pupils of the Bethlehem Central High School in Del Mar, New York, near Albany, where she completed her middle education before proceeding to study acting at Bowling Green State University and later connected with Delta Gamma Sorority. Saint was also said to have been introduced into the High School's Hall of Fame in 2006. Within this period, she featured as a lead actress in production referred to as Personal Appearance. She was so popular then that she had a theatre on Bowling Green's campus named after her. Saint was also a strong member of the theatre honorary fraternity Theta Alpha Phi and was reported to have served as record keeper for the Student Council in 1944. Soon she started appearing in the NBC live TV show Campus Hoopla between 1946 and 47. Her presentations on the programme were said to have been documented on intermittent kinescope and its sound recordings are preserved in the Library of Congress. Saint was also part of NBC's Bonnie Maid's versatile varieties of 1949 where she functioned as one of the initial singing Bonnie Maids 
adopted in the live commercials. Sometime in 1947, Saint was seen in a Life magazine special about television, plus a 1949 feature Life article concerning her story as an actress trying to make ends meet. It indicated that she was earning a very little amount from TV activities of the time, while also struggling to find something more useful in New York City. Saint continues in her quest for greatness toward the late 1940s, doing all-encompassing work in radio and television. She won the Drama Critics Award for her Broadway stage appearance in the Horton Foot play The Trip to Bountiful in 1953, co-starring with such tough actors as Lillian Gish and Joe Van Fleet. At this time she was growing in status and Saint became an Emmy nominee for Best Actress in a Single Performance on the Philco Television Playhouse. This first nomination was for her role as a young mistress of middle-aged E.G. Marshall in Middle of the Night by Paddy Chayefsky. Then she won another nomination for the television musical form of Our Town, gotten from the Thornton Wilder drama with the same name. In that production she co-starred with Paul Newman and Frank Sinatra. Her achievement and commendation in TV productions were of the highest standard and was being talked about randomly by critics. No wonder a certain primordial TV critic was reported to have then described her as the Helen Hayes of television. Although highly successful, Saint's beginning was not as rosy as you may think, because she also had to struggle her way through doing menial jobs both for NBC and others, just to be relevant in the industry. She gradually established her talent in the entertainment arena by laboriously working towards it. This was one reason she relocated to New York after her college education and would do any work that inclined towards this. Among her many activities then was doing a commercial for Ked's Sneakers, where she was reported to have shouted, Ked's are keen, after doing an initial act by applauding on camera for The Borden Show and earning as little as $15 for the role. At a point she had to focus on NBC and even serve as a tour guide, wishing for attention, which she did not quite get at the time, though she once stated that she missed a lot of opportunities to make friends the way she had wanted. But those experiences did bring some benefits to her career dream, most significantly being her encounter with one of her heroes, Joan Crawford, in an elevator. On what transpired when they met, Saint recalled how she was asked by the Mildred Pierce celebrity if she wanted to be an actress. She had responded with an affirmative yes, to which Joan had said to her, You will be, you will be. Even though Saint enjoyed acting, she appeared very comfortable with her on-stage performance compared to facing movie cameras. Hence, as she completed that television broadcast known as Trip to Bountiful, she admitted that she made a decision not to proceed with film acting any more because of the kind of responses she had received thereafter. The information available indicates that the majority of her displeasure came from the fact that the people involved in the televised play were more interested in her bodily appearance than her ability. They all wanted to know how much I weighed, my height and my bust size, she had stated regrettably. While her concern may be genuine at the time, she also failed to understand that showbiz is about meeting the fantasy need of society, which is what Hollywood tends to display at all times. Did she really find herself thinking, hey, this is silly, this is not for me, I want to stay in theatre, as she suggested. All that is now history and thankfully did not reject director Elia Kazan's proposal when he fell in love with her talent after watching her show and asked her to come for an audition with Marlon Brando, where she was later paired in a supporting role in that classic movie that became a double breakthrough for her. It skyrocketed her straight to fame, plus the prestigious Academy Award win. What exactly was her role in the movie? Saint was portrayed as a blonde actress and a sister of a murder victim who is also a love interest of Marlon. Everything about the movie was an instant success. Apart from the excellent reviews that Saint got for her performance, the film itself got 11 Academy Awards nominations and ended up winning 8, as well as being a huge box office success. The film's success would continue to be significant in her life because the media are still curious to know the magic behind the production and about her talent. 
Responding recently to how director Eli was able to bring the best out of her skill in an interview, Saint was quoted as saying, The director put me in a room with Marlon Brando and had said, Brando is the boyfriend of your sister. You're not used to being with a young man. Don't let him in the door under any circumstances. Saint was said to have added that she didn't know what the director told Marlon, but that he entered the room and became very playful with her. He put me off balance, and I remained off balance for the whole shoot, she recalled. The joy of winning the Oscar could not have come at a more delicate time of her life, as Saint was reported to have given birth 48 hours after that event. Receiving the medal from famous star Frank Sinatra at the trendy event, she was reported to have pushed excitedly on her protruding stomach, saying, I may have the baby right here, in excitement. What an awesome moment to be a mother! She was said to have been accompanied by her beloved husband, who sat behind her and had held her down when her name was mentioned, so she would not jump immediately, aware that her physical condition was delicate. She later explained how director Geoffrey Hayden, her husband, had whispered in her, saying, Now, honey, if they call your name, sit here and count to ten, because I was very pregnant, she stated. But on the film itself, she admitted to being slightly nervous during shooting. Saint told interviewers that at the time they were residing at 25 West 9th Street in the settlement. They hadn't been married for too long and that she felt tears down her eyes at the time, adding that her husband had grabbed her hand and said some words of encouragement to her. Now, honey, listen, you're from the actor's studio. Most of the actors are from the actor's studio and you are in Kazan's hands, he had said to her. She hinted that she never had any doubt from that moment on. Her fears were not because she did not think of herself as fit. On the contrary, she had been performing excellently during those numerous Broadway appearances and the earliest TV productions. Based on feedback from her fans, Saint believes that people loved the Waterfront story. She also described Kazan as her favourite film director, having worked with famous directors like Norman Jewison, Vincent Minnelli, Fred Zinnemann, Edward Dimitrik, Otto Preminger and John Frankenheimer, including Hitchcock in that classic North by Northwest. She claimed that her husband remains her favourite leading man, perhaps the reason she remains married to him all through his life. On what she thinks about On the Waterfront, co-star Brando, Saint noted that he was such a wonderful actor and the best she had probably worked with. I think in those days he was so happy acting. I think he must have lost the joy. I mean, look what he did to his instrument she said, referring to Brando, who she said had gained a lot of weight at the time of the interview. She noted that as part of the lesson she learned why in the actor's studio one must always maintain his or her body, which she described as the instrument. All you have is your instrument like a musician has his instrument. You take care of it, she said. Eva Marie Saint is indeed an achiever both in her career and family life. She got married to her soul mate, producer and director Geoffrey Hayden on the 28th of October 1951. The union was blessed with two wonderful children, a son Darrell Hayden and a daughter Lorette Hayden, who has since given the duo four grandchildren. They had their first child Darrell two days after she was declared winner of the Academy Award for her on the waterfront performance. Saint and Hayden were indeed happy parents whose joy was extended to their grandchildren, so it may have come as a shock to Saint when the news of Hayden's death came on the 24th of December 2016. Fate has a way of saying no, otherwise the two would no doubt still be together at this time. Hayden died at the age of 90, and their marriage entered history as one of the longest Hollywood marriages. Her legacy earned her two deserving stars on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, one being for motion pictures at 6624 Hollywood Boulevard, and another for television at 6730 Hollywood Boulevard, cementing her achievement in the golden age of Hollywood. Saint may have retired, but not tired, as she has remained relevant in the entertainment circle with more accolades. Recall that she was given in 2007 one of the Golden Boot Awards for her influence on Western cinema. Saint was also reported to have lent a voice to the 2012 Nickelodeon animated sequence The Legend of Korra, which was an outcome of the triumphant TV show Avatar The Last Airbender, standing for the now elderly Katara, who was a major character in the original series. 
and in September of the same year she took part in the adult version of Willa in the film taken from the novel Winter's Tale by Mark Helprin. The movie was however released on Valentine's Day of the year 2014. When Saint turned 93, she also appeared at the 2018 Academy Award ceremonies, where she was billed to present the award for costume design, and was said to have received an exceptional standing ovation when she entered the podium. If you liked this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you are new here, and if you want to support my work, please visit my Patreon page. Eva Marie Saint was brave enough to confront Marlon Brando for being fat. But let's see what happened to him behind the silver screen and how Marlon Brando became so fat he could not act properly. Watch this video.